Hello, I'm Dr. Abstract, and welcome to Remakes. Here we're going to remake some classic games and puzzles. <sighs> We've avoided doing this for the longest time because we want you to make new things. So hopefully you'll make new things, but until then, here are some classics. Cheers! Okay, here we are at zimjs.com. Now we're going to be using the Zim JavaScript Canvas framework to code creativity. All right, we're going to go to the code section and copy the template. Copy, like so. I'll drop this down and go into Atom. We're coding in Atom, but you can choose any editor you want. VS Code, Sublime, etc. And we will change this to bum 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 space invaders. Ers? Invaders? Invaders? <laughs> Helps if we can spell it. All right, this is a Zim template. We're going to adjust it slightly to include the game module, underscore game, like that. And that will bring allow us to bring in a score and a timer if we need to. Um, we're going to use a score from that. And we'll get rid of the circle that is in there and have a look at Open in Browser Plus, which is a plugin that we've loaded that allows us to view uh, right in the editor here. Or we could open this in uh, Chrome or what have you. Okay, so we're going to make Space Invaders. And there's going to be uh, a group of invaders that are coming down. We heard that there's a challenge uh, to see how quickly we can make Space Invaders. So we thought we would give it a go. And we're gonna not going to rush it too much. Um, and maybe do some educating along the way. That's the hopes here. There is a big learn section in the Zim site that uh, you can learn how to use Zim and even learn how to use JavaScript for creative coding there as well. So this is our template. We've got a frame and we've got this stage that we're going to be putting things on. Uh, you'll find if you've ever coded in Flash that this is very much like coding in Flash. So here we go. We don't have a timer, but uh, we'll, we'll just get started. We're going to make the invaders. Const invaders is equal to a new tile. We'll actually set up const calls is equal to how many columns do we want? 10. And const rows is equal to three rows of invaders. And we're going to tile new circles. And uh, how about we give it an R as well. Const R is equal to 25 for a radius. So there we go. And we'll make them purple. And then the next thing, next parameters are the calls and the rows, followed by the spacings. But we'll just leave them all bunched up there. And we will dot, well, we won't center it. We'll um, dot add to. We'll just start them up in the corner. So we can locate, position, center, etc. But if we just add two, there they are starting up in the top. Why don't we make this 1,000 by 1,000 square and black as well. Okay, now we want to uh, move, and that will fit there on the stage, or on the stage, but also in the window, however that is. And then we'll make those move across to the right. So we would normally do that by just saying dot animate and uh, say how to animate those. But um, with Space Invaders, they're a little bit different in that they they go boom, beep, boom, beep, boom. They go clunk, 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 clunk. So we'll we'll move those over in an interval. Const movement is equal to interval. So this is a Zim interval, very much like a set interval. We're storing it in a variable so that later we can clear it when we end the game. And the Zim interval has a time that comes first and then a function. So we'll go const speed equals 0.1. And that's in seconds. And then we'll put the speed in there and call this arrow function. Inside here, we'll move the invaders over. Invaders.x plus equals the radius times 2. So that'll move over the width of, of each invader each time. And here's what that would look like. 
<laughs> oh, we have to stage dot update. So that's another thing. So over if anything happens and makes a change in Zim, we stage dot update like so, and that will update those. Boop 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 boop, and off they go. So we'll need to bounce back, and that would be something like invaders dot x plus. Oh, do it conditional if invaders x plus invaders dot width is greater than the stage width, then we want to do a couple things. We can move down, so that'll be a lot like this. Uh, in the y, so we'll move down in the y. And if we restarted invaders dot x is equal to zero, then it would restart back at the beginning. That's not quite what we want to do. No, we want to bounce and go the reverse direction. So we'll make a direction const direction equals one for now. And if we hit, then we can change direction. Uh, direction times equals minus one. And then we'll multiply it by the direction. I think we probably want to do that after. And then we'll in here, we'll times by the direction, times direction. Oh, maybe it wouldn't have mattered. Yeah, okay, let's see if that works. So we're time, right, reversing the direction. Oh, to boop, boop, boop. Oh, it didn't work. So what do we do wrong? If it's greater than the stage width, invaders, do, 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 oh, times direction here. No, what's, oh, no, we don't need to times direction there. That's just moving down. We don't want to set it to zero. That's messing it up. Okay, right, there we go. Do, do, do. Yep, that wasn't it either. Uh, direction times, are we getting an error of some sort? Ah, yes, an error. Assignment to a constant variable. Let. There it goes across and it bounces back. <clears throat> you know, goes off the beginning. So if it's greater than the stage width or invaders.x is less than zero, then we'll want to bounce. All right, there she goes going to the bottom. We'll worry about what happens if it gets to the bottom a little bit later. Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll end the game. Maybe that will be in here too. But for now, let's create a player. Const player is equal to a new rectangle. And we will make it the radius times two by the radius times two and green. There we go. And we'll position this at, how about the radius times two and the radius times two? There we go, uh, from the left and bottom. I'm not sure where it would get started, in the middle or whatever. All right, there she is, or he, he or she, positioned there, and we'll want to move the player. So to move the player, we would normally just put it in a motion controller, which is new motion controller, pass in the player, and then say key down, if we want to control it with key down, and that would move around. Uh, however, we probably figure maybe the player should move kind of at the same speed as the, as the invaders, I guess. I don't, I don't know. So let's do it old fashioned way with key moves. But, uh, Zim has, um, a motion controller, which makes this very easy to motion control based on the key, based on your mouse, based on following the mouse, pressing the mouse, based on, uh, game controllers as well. But we'll do it the old-fashioned way, and that's with a frame dot on key down, which is the same as uh, window dot add event listener key down. We'll call this arrow function and collect the event object there. So if we zog e dot key code, that's like console dot log key code, then we can capture some key codes here and see 
what kind of keys we want. So I'm going to do the, how about the right arrow, left arrow, and space bar. And we'll take a look in the console. 39, 37, 32. So uh, we can say if e dot key code uh, is equal to 39, that's to the right. Then we will, well, let's set some variables up here. Boom, boom, boom. Let right equal false. So we're, we haven't got the, the right key down at the moment. Let left, so this will be left. And we'll also do a shoot. So we're not doing any of those things at the moment. But down here, if the key code's 39, then we are going to write is equal to true. Or we could have actually said write is equal to e dot key. Uh, anyway, e dot key code equals 39. This is probably a little bit easier to understand. So if it's 37, then left is true. And if it was 32, then shoot is true. We'll do something for the key up that is very similar. And on key up, we'll set those back to false. Like so. Um, that will allow us to adjust all this stuff in the interval. And so we're just saying what we want to do. And then up in the interval, we'll, we'll match it. So here's the moving interval here. We can say if right, then we want to move this thing to the right. So we would say player dot x plus equals r times two, I think it is. And if it's left, player.x minus equals r2. Let's have a look. So now I'm holding down the right key, the left key, but ah, look at that. It goes off the, off the stage. OK, so we'll want to adjust it going off the stage. We can say if it's right and ampersand. Oh, come on, I can get those ampersands. Ampersand, ampersand. Player.x is less than stage width. Let's see, the x is on the left hand side, so less than players x plus player dot width is less than that. We can go ahead and do that um, if it's left. And player dot x is less than, is greater than zero, greater than zero, then we can do that. Okay, let's have a look and see if that locks it in there. Okay, going left worked, going right worked. So we've just locked the player in based on the bounds. So let's shoot then. If shoot, we will make a new rectangle. Oh, we'll probably want to like this laser, we'll probably want to add it to a container called lasers or something like that. Const lasers equals a new container. Stage width, stage height, dot add two. So we'll add all of our lasers into that and that will allow us to loop through that whole container and find out if it hits any of the invaders. The tile is also a container, but it's just been tiled. And now we've made a new container. Uh, we'll just put that add to up there. I don't know how many things. Sometimes if we have a lot of things to add, I'll, I'll drop it down. If we've only got one, things that we're, one thing that we're chaining on there, you'll note that in Zim we chain a lot. I haven't really chained yet, but uh, we do that a lot. So what do we want to do? When we shoot, we will make a okay, yeah, new mm, rectangle. And it will basically be the same as the player which is here, but maybe not green. I'll make it yellow, a good laser color. And we will dot loc that at the player. So we'll start off uh, locating it at the player. Um, 
but we want it inside of lasers. So when you locate, you can locate an X and Y or just add an object with an X and Y. Uh, and therefore we don't need a Y here. So null un or undefined. And then here we will say that that is in lasers like so. So that locates it there. We're also going to animate it dot animate. So here's that chaining that we mentioned. And we'll animate it to a Y position of minus 100. So up there somewhere in two seconds. We'll make it linear easing. So it doesn't like go slow to start and then speed up and then slow down. So that's linear easing. And when it's done, we want to remove it. So uh, that's target. Like this is the callback. So we'll call this as a callback function, which receives what is what's finished animating. So we can say target dot dispose or remove from would have been fine. But if we're not going to use it again, we may as well dispose. OK, let's test that. So we'll make it only go up to 100 and we'll do some shooting. Pew, pew, pew. Oh, well, OK. Well, it did remove once it gets to 100. But you see, the problem is it, it's it's shooting too quickly, um, our laser. So let's slow down the shooting a little bit by saying don't shoot every interval. But um, if we collect the the uh, the interval object here, OBJ, then we can say if shoot and <laughs> no problem reading reaching that ampersand this morning uh, and OBJ dot count. So that says what interval count we're on. So if we said percent two uh, is equal to zero there, that means that it's um, every second one. OK, good. So that's a little bit better. Might still be quick. How about we go to 0.4? So this will slow down our shooting. So I'm holding down the space bar and there's my shooting. OK, that's probably OK. One, one thing it doesn't do, though, is it doesn't shoot right away. It, it, it might shoot right away, but it might be slightly delayed. Uh, OK, we're probably good, though. So there's the shooting, and now we want to find out if that's hitting anything in in the um, any of the invaders. So what we can do is we want to test that all the time. And when we want to do something all the time in Zim, we add a function to the ticker. The ticker runs at request animation. Um, time <laughs> and it also we have a queue in a sense so animation runs in the ticker we can add functions to the ticker and that way we don't do um, multiple stage dot updates that we don't need so here's the ticker and we're going to add this arrow function right here we might want to remove the ticker later so i'm going to put const ticker tickler <laughs> ticker is equal to that so that i have an id so that I can ticker.remove. Here we're ticker.adding. And the function we're going to do is we're going to loop through, uh, we'll loop through all of our what? Our invaders, Inva invaders.loop. So that's the, um, that's our tile of invaders. And each time we're going to get an invader. <laughs> Uh, and pass it into this arrow function. So that's a zim loop. And we're also going to loop through each of our lasers. So lasers dot a loop. And each time we get a laser and pass it into that arrow function. And then we find out if invaders dot hit test circle against a rectangle, uh, the laser. That means we're hitting, and we'll do this stuff if we're hitting. So Zim's got a bunch of hit tests. We'll probably want to check to see if the circle of the invader is hitting the rectangle of the laser. That's an equation-based hit test. We're just testing the, if those shapes intersect. It's very, very fast. There's also hit test circle, which checks for any shape hitting a circle, the points around a circle, though. And that's a point test. It puts a bunch of points around the circle and does a hit test there. And hit test rect, and there's hit test um, bounds, and hit test reg, and hit test point, et cetera, and hit test grid. So there's all sorts of hit tests in Zim, but this is the one that we want. So if that's happening, we basically want to remove the laser. So laser.dispose. That will get rid of that laser. We also want to get rid of the invader. 
So that would be invader.dispose. So that will get rid of it right away. Um, should we check that? See, refresh here, and we shoot. Pew, 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 pew. Um, something's going wrong because that's just only going part way there, and then something weird is going. It's uh, yeah, it doesn't look good. So in, if invaders hit tests in in not invaders, that's it. So we're hitting the whole <laughs> block of thing. If the invader hits the laser, um, okay. So we need to check each invader. And yeah, that's better. So what had happened there is we were just checking to see if all of the invaders hit, and that's not how you do it. You do each individual invader hitting a laser. All right, so that seems to be working. There is a little bit of a problem, perhaps, if we hit the edge of the invaders. Let's see what happens if we do, if we can hit the edge of some invaders here. Um, almost. Oh, it seems to. Yeah, there it is. See how that doesn't go right to the edge now on this side? Uh, we might want to fix that. So we'll fix that in just a sec. For now, uh, that would remove them directly, but we might, we, we could, instead of disposing them right away, this is the invader, we can say invader dot color equals red. So we'll, sh we'll show that we've hit it. And then invader dot animate will slowly animate out the um, alpha, alpha, well, not slowly, but whatever. Animate the alpha to zero in 0.5 seconds. We don't care about the easing, so we'll set that to null, but we do want to call back, and that is the target. Uh, we will say, we'll dispose that at that point, which would be invader or the target, doesn't really matter target.dispose. Okay, so uh, is that it there? Yeah, I think so. That should animate out each invader as it goes. But um, because we're animating now, we might run into problems in that we don't want to keep on reanimating the same invader that we've hit. So we only want to do our hit test if um, not invader dot hit like that uh, and and then in here we can say invader dot hit is equal to true javascript is dynamic which means we can add any property we want like that and just say it's true so we're hitting that one and what that does is it means we won't hit it again as it's animating out that uh, probably would create a bug if if we left it like that Okay, so great. We also want to find out if we're winning, though. So if we win, that means we've hit all of them. So how do we do that? Hmm. We would do it when we hit, sure. If we could do it based on the number of children in invaders, but the thing is, this is animating that out. So there's going to be a delay, which means we'd have to wait until it animated out before there would be zero children and we'd win. So let's do it based on our rows and columns. That would be called, well, just based on a score. Do we have a score? Okay, let's put in a, sc a score as well. Just temporarily leave that out. Uh, there's the player. We can say const score er. We often use a variable score, so what we've done is made it a little new. We have a timer and we have a score. It's a little bit unusual to call it a score, but uh, it kind of makes sense. So we're calling that a score and we're going to dot pose that at something like 50 comma 50 comma from the right comma top, but top is default. So there's our score there. And then each time we hit, we can say score er dot score plus plus. Yeah, let's have a look and see if the score is scoring. Beep, 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 beep. Oh, yeah, okay, score is going up. And now, based on the score, we can say if score.score is equal to rows times calls like that, then we can uh, make a new pane. And we'll make that pane 400 by 
200 and we will say you win uh, and what color should we make that blue um we'll dot show that so pain is a little bit different it has a height like a darkened background backdrop kind of thing other things get added as well so it's sort of we have a method for showing the pain you can also pass in a, a function so when the pane gets hidden, it'll call that function, a few other things like that. So we show a pane, but we also want to stop some things. We want to stop these loops. We want to stop the ticker. We want to stop the motion, all that kind of stuff. So we will say end game here. So we also want to stop if we lose, and we'll put the function end game. Looks like we got a lot of a lot of stuff going on. So this is the end ticker. Uh, this is the these are end loops. Ah, if we remove things, here we are removing things. When we remove things from loops, we've got to loop backwards. Uh, otherwise, we'd run into an error. I didn't see the error, but we would. It's an intermittent error. It's really tricky. And we know that, and so there's us looping backwards. Because when you remove something from containers, it changes the index numbers. If you're going forwards, those get messed up. So you loop backwards, and uh, we'll put a little comment in there. Uh, backwards. If removing. Okay. Uh, so anyway, that's what those guys are. Just notice there's a lot of ending brackets, which is sometimes confusing. So there's our function end game. And right now we will end the ticker. So that's ticker.remove uh, ticker. That's the ID. <laughs> Tickler. <laughs> ticker. And the other one was movement, movement.clear. So that's our interval, and we've kept an interval.clear to match the JavaScript interval.clear. So there's our movement. That will clear that stuff when we end the game. Great. And we have to win. Uh, can we win? I don't know if we can win or not. <laughs> Uh, just sit in the middle and shoot. Uh, <laughs> sitting in the middle is probably better than trying to follow it along. <laughs> yeah, I win. Okay, great. All right, so we got 30 and we win. Super. What if we lose, though? So what if those things make it all the way to the bottom? Hmm. Oh, the other thing is we might want to exit out of our loops, which isn't the easiest thing to do because it's a double loop. So um, with the Zim loop, we go uh, return false or something. And that will, anything that we return will exit out of the loop. If we just return, it's like a continue. But if we return an, a value, then it's like a break. So we've just broken out of our first loop but we also don't want to continue going on in our other one. So what we'll do is we'll say, let uh, continue game equal the value of this. And so if that's it, when this returns, it will go into there. And so we can basically say, if continue game is triple equal to false, then we want to loop out of this one, um, return. or true or whatever. If we return anything, we'll loop, we'll get out of that. And so that stops that next loop from going. A little bit tricky. Okay, let's go up and take a look at how we can find out if we've hit the bottom and also solve that problem. We had a bit of a problem with the, um, the going back and forth. But generally, we're pretty well done. We just want to lose. So we could lose down below as well if it hits, but um, how about we do it in here? So that relates to the bounds. We have this, this tile here, and it's got these bounds. Uh, the tile is, by default, will, will remain the bounds of how it was unless we reset those. So that looks like this, invaders.setbounds. 
nothing. So if we set nothing, it will then take on bounds that grow and shrink with what has been added or removed. So that's good. So we've just reset those bounds. Now we're going to use those bounds um, in here. So uh, let bounds equal invaders.get bounds. So if we ask for the bounds, that will tell us the new bounds. And so what we'll say is if invaders x plus bounds.x. So that's the x position of the starting bounds. And this is bounds.width now. And that you'll see um, if, if stuff gets chopped off from the left hand side, the invaders x never changes, but then the x will be moved in. And so this will sort of help calculate all of that stuff. And indeed here, if it's invaders bounds plus bounds dot x, okay? Um, so that's a little bit tricky, but that will handle that. And then we can also find out if we've hit the bottom in this way too. If, and it'll be something very much like this. If invaders y, plus the bounds dot y plus the bounds dot height is greater than the stage height, then we've hit the bottom. Uh, ooh, well, let's see. Okay, let's just test that. And what do we want to do when we hit the bottom? It's something like what we did here. So it's going to be mostly that. Beep, 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 beep. When we hit the bottom, like so, except it will say, you lose. And we'll make it I don't know, red or yellow. Black. It'll be black text by default on yellow. Probably would look better and we'll show and we'll end the game. Okay, and let's speed that up a little bit to 0 0.01 and see where this hits when we lose. Okay. You lose. Okay, so it looks like it went one farther than that. Did I, maybe I need an equal greater than that. Equal to the stage width. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, and so you lose. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We've made, uh, we've made Space Invaders probably in about half an hour. Yay! I'll slow that down. There's no way I can win that. And let's have a look. So that's you lose if it hits down there. And let's test out that shooting thing that we had now. See if we can get the edges off and see if indeed it goes all the way to the edge. Can't quite tell yet. Yeah, there goes the last one. Yeah, and it's going to the edge. What about on the other side? Uh, yeah, it's still going to the edges of them. See that? Isn't that cool? And so we're going to see if we win. I win! Yeah! And let's do a final test to see if I lose. Okay, so here's how a lot of people play Space Invaders. They try and follow this thing along and go, oh man, I'm, oh, I keep on going the wrong way. Oh, can I do it? Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, obviously, maybe some balancing and stuff like that. Oh, I can almost get the, oh no, come on. Oh, I lost. Oh, I only got 24. Oh. So um, that's okay. I mean, we made that probably pretty quickly, I think, and there were some helpful things from Zim, but what we didn't really see is a lot of uh, Zim stuff. Zim is great for making components. We don't really have any components here. Uh, that's like sliders, buttons, and dials, and all sorts, like uh, dozens and dozens of components that we could use. We did bring in a pane here, and we brought in a, a, a scorer, uh, by the way, a timer is the same thing. We could have like put the timer there. I think every, there is no need, need for a timer here, I don't think. It just they move down at a certain amount of time. It's always going to be the same time. Uh, but how about this? Like maybe adding an emitter when we hit. So where did we hit something? Beep, boop, beep, beep, beep. You guys see the hit test? <laughs> Somewhere in here there's a hit test. Ah, oh, it was down, down below here. There's our hit. So if we've hit, we could do something like this. We could say, uh, yeah, sure, here, new emitter. And we will start pause, start pause, 
colon true. What we've just done there is instead of a normal parameters, emitters have normal parameters too, we've jumped right to a certain parameter by putting it in an object literal or a configuration object. We call that the Zim Duo technique. We can do either animations like this with the passing in the null, or we can put them in squiggly brackets like that and say, uh, well, I'll put that other squiggly bracket on the end here. And we go on the end here, boop, squiggly bracket, tab that in, tab that in. And are you ready? This is the props, props, colon. This is the time, time, colon. We don't need the null anymore because we don't care about that parameter. And this is the call, colon. So there we go. So the props is the alpha to zero or whatever other props we have. The time is the time. If we did, if we wanted one second, we wouldn't even need to put that there. Um, this is the callback, and there's the callback function right there. Okay, so that's the Zim Duo technique. That would work as well. Okay. Um, anyway, we've done that with the emitter to tell it to start paused. Normally, emitter will just keep on emitting, emitting, emitting. So we're starting paused and we're spurting. So spurt is the method to say how many we want, say 10 of them, like that. And watch what happens now. See, this is making good use of Zim, which has all these fun things. Pew, 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 pew. <laughs> Didn't work. We made the emitter, we forgot to position it. So there's the emitter. We told it uh, to loc at the invader. There we go. So locate the emitter at the invader. Uh, so we never added the emitter to the stage, which is why we didn't see it. Ah, uh, there we go. And, and see, isn't that cool? You know, like, oh, nice. And we've also got really easy sprites, so we could change those into sprites. Our sprites are constantly coming in like half the size of uh, Pixie.js sprites and Create.js sprites. Really uh, nice, wow, 60% size. Anyway, really nice um, sprites as well, easy to use, as well as a ton of other features uh, in Zim. That, that's just you know really, really handy. Okay, these things called ZimV values, which are for dynamic parameters. Anyway, uh, I think as, as you go through Zim, let's go to the site here. Here's the Zim site. Uh, if you take a look at uh, the many examples, there's lots of examples of how to do these things. And there's interactive NFTs, making art with code. These are collections, so if you wanted to find out more about the emitter, there's uh, whole collections on particles uh, that would look like this. Pew. Oh, wow. So those are emitters as well, but these are different things that we're doing uh, with emitters and using an emitter for that kind of neat effect that goes on there. Um, there's noise and animation and, and the various components are listed in here and all what's new. Here's a whole bunch of code pen examples so you can come in and see. We're, we've started this series on remaking things. We have remade some things before and maybe we'll remake the remakes. <laughs> but generally we're hoping that you'll make uh, your own unique things. <laughs> you know, instead of remakes, it just killed us. Uh, we made a jigsaw puzzle on code pen and it's just like got the most views it's like oh come on you guys jigsaw puzzles are so oh so there's a jigsaw puzzle uh it is not easy to make a jigsaw puzzle um there, there's a fair bit of code that goes in it even even in zim but uh, <laughs> you'll see that under the comments here 121 likes you know it's like oh come on you guys it's just a bloody jigsaw puzzle ah um, but anyway, we are going to consider doing some, some remakes. We also had this series under the learn section here. Here's the learn, which will take you through a whole bunch of tutorials, but there's this one right here, uh, code in five minutes. So there's a whole bunch of code in five minutes. We thought about doing this one in five minutes, but it would have ended up being, uh, let's go, we'll show you invaders dropping down in five minutes. Okay, we'll show you a player moving in five minutes. Okay, we'll show you. <laughs> so anyway, it would have been a little bit of a cheat. That happened, we did an Angry Birds uh, version with physics. And uh, we ended up doing, I think, four or five minutes. But it's just like Angry Birds in 20 minutes, you know? So anyway, we might uh, redo some of those for this series. I'm not sure. I'm Dr. Abstract. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this making of Space Invaders. 
And here on Medium are all these guides to coding creativity on the canvas. Um, we really took our time. Uh, so if you want a textbook approach, there's that. Also, the Zim School is very much like a textbook approach as well. If you pop in here, we've got uh, a bunch of lessons. But in the lessons, we go through what is all happening, much like a textbook. But on here, we also have uh, ways that we can practice making different shapes. So each of these is practicing making a different shape right here in the browser. These are applying transformations to those shapes. These are practicing using our different components like labels and buttons and checkboxes and sliders and dials and radio buttons and et cetera, tabs. So uh, that's Zim. Yay, I am Dr. Abstract, this little fellow here, and we'll catch you guys later. If you're a kid, kids love coding, there's Zim Kids as well. You can learn that way. And check out our other vids under the vids. Cheers, have a great day. Uh, go, come visit us at Slack or at Discord, zimjs.com slash Slack, zimjs.com slash Discord. We'd love to see you there. Bye-bye.